Hi, my name is Joshua Weaver. I'm the director of the Texas Opportunity and Justice Incubator, a flagship program of the State Bar of Texas. Today, we are here to talk to you about how AI-powered apps can supercharge your law firm. Many people wanted to know, how can I get started using large language models? And there's easily some confusion about which model is best, which service should I pay for? Let's start with the first premise, and that is you definitely should pay for it. The free version of ChatGBT for context barely managed to pass the bar exam. The paid version, which costs $20 a month, managed to max out the UBE exam. So there's a really large difference in intelligence between the free services and the paid services. With that in mind, perplexity.ai is the best bang for your buck. And the reason why is because once you pay for Perplexity, which is also a $20 a month subscription, you can actually choose which of the other leading models you want Perplexity to use. So you can choose Claude Opus, or you can use ChatGPT4, or any number of other leading large language models. In addition to being able to use those top models for the $20 a month, Perplexity is an amazing service to get started with because of the fact that when you perform a search, it will cite all of the sources for the answer that the large language model generates. That allows you to check your sources and verify that the information you're being given is actually correct. So head over to perplexity.ai and pick up a paid subscription, and then go into the settings and choose either Claude Opus or ChatGPT4 as your model. How many hours per week do you think that you spend at your desk sending emails? There's an AI-powered application called Superhuman, which claims to revolutionize and speed up how much time it takes you to get these communications out. I will tell you off the front, it is very expensive. It's $30 a month. This seems ridiculous for an AI application. However, here's what it does that can really maximize your communications. Number one, when you receive an email and you need to write a response, you can use AI to generate a response that is written in your tone and your style of writing. You can do this using a series of hotkeys and it only takes a matter of seconds. Then you can edit that draft and you can get a response out in a quicker turnaround. Another great feature of Superhuman is that it can automatically summarize lengthy threads of email conversations. So if you received an email a few weeks ago, there's maybe 10 back and forths and you don't remember exactly what was said, you can press a button and the AI will go through and give you bullet points summarizing the details of that communication thread. Both of these features together have saved me hours and hours of time emailing each month. And in my opinion, it well justifies the $30 a month expense. Give it a try, superhuman for your email. As a reminder, with any technology, we have a duty to be aware of the risks and benefits of using that technology. This comes from the ABA model rule and has been adopted by around 40 states, including Texas. So when you are using an AI tool or any other new tool, we must be aware of both the risks and the benefits of any technology that we use. So if you're using a new AI powered tool, don't forget that that rule, along with all of the other rules about data privacy and security and confidentiality, always do apply. There's a principle when it comes to creative thinking that the more information you can offload from your brain's memory, the more that frees up your bandwidth in order to think creatively and think efficiently. A top strategy here is to take good notes. If you take good notes, that's less information you have to hold in your brain. Now, with AI-powered applications, you can use an application like Notion or Obsidian, and you can actually create an AI-powered connection between your notes and a sort of virtual personal assistant. You can think of this as somebody that has read all of your notes, mastered its content, and now you can ask questions across multiple notes and get information as if somebody has already understood everything that you've ever put in the note-taking application. Now, for attorneys, this is a very powerful tool because as you're working through a case or a matter, 
you can constantly be uploading information, getting it out of your brain, and then at a later date, you can come back, ask the AI, and it can retrieve that information and present it in a quick summary for you. Once again, those applications are Notion and Obsidian, and both of these applications can use AI to retrieve your notes. Since the pandemic, we've all been doing a lot more Zoom. And when you get on a Zoom, it's good to create a recording. That way you can look back and see what was talked about, what questions were raised, and are there any to-do items that came out of that meeting? There are two AI-powered applications that can greatly help with this process. The first is the built-in functionality in Zoom. Now, this is something that you have to pay for, but it can do a great job of creating a transcript and allowing you to jump through the video to find the important information that came out of that meeting. The second alternative is called Fathom, and Fathom can do the same thing, but there's no upfront cost. Now, the benefit of using this software is that rather than manually scrubbing through a video to find the part where you talked about the thing, you can just quickly search through the transcript, click on the part that you're interested in, and that will cut directly to the part of the video that contains the information that you're looking for. Now, this is really good for administrative and more casual conversations, but I do want to flag post one potential concern, and that is data privacy and confidentiality. So if you are having a discussion that is about a sensitive client matter, or if you're discussing sensitive personal information, you probably want to be able to pause or turn off the recording during that part of the discussion. You don't want to be held responsible for uploading sensitive information somewhere that it shouldn't be. However, that disclaimer aside, both of these tools can save you a lot of time when it comes to digging up information from a meeting. If you're interested in putting ChatGPT to work as more of a personal assistant, there's a paid feature called Custom GPTs. Now to get to this, you have to have a paid subscription to ChatGPT. Then you navigate to Explore GPTs and click on My GPTs. This will allow you to create a custom bot that you can then train on your internal knowledge and a process for a given task. So to help make this a little more concrete, Imagine that you run a weekly blog on one of your practice areas. If you were to use ChatGPT, every time you were creating a new blog post, you would have to re-explain, here's what my law firm does, here's the tone, here's the style, here's the link that I'm going for, and so on. However, if you use a custom bot, you can train that bot one time, and then every week when you go to create a new post, it already has the context and understands what you want it to do to create a great blog post. Now, for the time being, I would recommend using these custom bots only for internal processes. I wouldn't use this as a public facing tool yet, and that's because of some of the limitations of the custom bots. However, for internal processes, there are almost unlimited uses where you can train ChatGPT and then repeatedly use it as a templated process. I highly recommend checking this out if you have a paid subscription. One of the big questions I get a lot when it comes to AI is, what tools can I use safely and how do I avoid getting written up on above the law? So the answer to this is we are still beholden to the same rules of technology competency, data privacy and security, confidentiality, as we've always been. And those rules still apply even if you're using a new technology powered by AI. Now, the quickest way to figure out whether or not you can use an AI powered tool in a responsible manner is number one, pay for it. I highly recommend that you do not use a free service and upload any important information. Number two, you can redact the information. So go through and remove any identifying information before you upload it to the AI tool. And then number three, for attorneys, I highly recommend that you read the terms of service and pay particular attention to what does it say about data privacy and data security? If you follow these three rules, I think you're setting yourself up well to use the tools responsibly while still gaining the benefit of using the AI powered tools. Once again, my name is Joshua Weaver. I'm the director of the Texas Opportunity and Justice Incubator, 
also known as TOGI, which is a flagship program of the State Bar of Texas. Visit us at texasbarpractice.com and look for the blog where we'll be uploading more information like this with helpful practice tips. If you found this information helpful, give us a like, a follow, and subscribe. And if you have a question, leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.